Welcome back to my shop, folks, and part two to the reboot of my channel. We are doing another tangential arrangement this time, using teak, wenge, and a red dyed veneer. Here's the cutoff sheet, with the diagram being staves on end, double line being the saw kerf. Time to laminate. I use parchment paper to keep the glue from spreading. One hour later. Now it's time to repeat that process with the teak. One hour allows for easy cleanup of glue and edges of your staves. You want these to stay square for the following process. And in here in front of the nice cozy warm fireplace in the middle of winter, we have them curing. I'll let this glue cure overnight. The next day. Here we have our table saw set up at 14 degrees and with the depth only halfway through the stave. This allows for easy control of your stave running through the table saw by flipping it over. We can run it through the second half and not have our stave catch between the fence and the blade. To get the, our stave perfectly centered in the blank, I use a blade shadowing technique. That way we have two equal parts. Here we're finishing up the rest of our staves, 24 total at 14 degrees, which gives us 336 degrees and 24 degrees short of making a full circle. So when our staves are placed on end, we will have a gap. This will allow for a tangential arrangement. And here is the opposite cone. Now I couldn't let you all miss out on the glue up process, so here it is. On the left you can see the setup for our lower half of our blank. The plywood ring is simply only a guide for initial setup and to hold the parchment paper in place. I have a ball placed in an indentation in the center of the lower portion with the cone sitting on the ball. The ball keeps the cone in shape and centered in the press. We will repeat that for the top half of the blank. Later. And we're on to stripping the clamps off of our blank. My original intent of doing such an arrangement was that I could cut it in half, being able to place both cones together to have a top and bottom for a lidded vessel. 
Upon making an egg out of this, it looked great, but when you open it up, the staves actually change direction to each other. Great concept, didn't work out too well. Here comes the furball supervisor, Ed, making sure that I'm organizing my clamps correctly. Thanks a lot, buddy. We are ready to mount to the lathes with the use of a tapered plug and some hot glue. Happy with the shape, on to hollowing.
Now that we got the bottom of the vessel hollowed and finished inside, we are ready to move on to the base. The blue tape is there to keep raw wood for glue up. We have the bottom of the feet and the mortise. We're ready to flip this around. I like to adjust my lay to a speed where my ghost line is solid to the light fluctuation. Also, you'll see me use an under lighting to accent the ghost line too. I like the tenon and mortise fit on to shaping the feet. And with a little pre-finish to the base and bottom of vessel, we are ready for the union of the two.
finishing at a height of 12 and one quarter inches and a diameter of six.